Before you start this tutorial, I would like to say could you please go to the official Live 2D Cubism tutorials that Live 2D has made themselves. It is how I started making my models and it is really helpful. It does take a few hours to do but it is just the basics. And quite a few of these things in here I might not go over that they do go over in the tutorial. So before you watch this, can you please go watch the Live 2D Cubism tutorials. Hello, it is me Moonbee. Um, in this video I'm going to be giving a short tutorial on Live 2D Cubism. For example, making a very simple model, if it's front facing or side facing, just some basic rigging and some basic things in the animator or if, for example anything that you've seen on my channel I will likely show in this video. So let's get on with making a model. <laughs> When making a model in Live 2D Cubism, it usually helps with Gacha if you take the body sheets and build the character from then up up. If you were to be making just a normal model, like some of my others, um, you would simply just build up the character with like separating the legs and the arms and the head. And depending if you want waving hair, you want to separate the hair. And for the eyes, you want to like have the tops, the sides, the whites and the pupils. If you're making a front facing character, you have to make all the parts front facing. So you can, there are many tutorials on YouTube which can help you make front facing characters. But for me, I usually take the body part and make it kind of symmetrical, but also kind of still looking like the um, model. <laughs> usually it does take a lot of time, but in the end you do get the hang of it and you get a bit quicker. For simple rigging, you mainly, for me, whenever I start or make a new model, I start with the eyes, because I find that is one of the most easiest things that I can do. It's very simple with the eyes, all you have to do is make them move up and down, and you can kind of like squish the eyes and the pupils and the sides into the, um, the top lid, so that you can make it look like the character is blinking. Um, also, you can make the pu the eyes, the pupils, move from side to side, but if you have the pro version, you can make them just look all over the screen, like my character. Also, probably before you start rigging everything, it is really helpful to make the rotation of the head, because once you've put all the deformers and rotation things on there, you will not be able to do that in the future, and it's something I forget an awful lot. For rotating the head, you simply have to select all the eyes and the hair and the head and the mouths of the head and then put it all into one big rotating deformer and then you can make it a rotating head and put it into one of the key things. And also a very simple thing that you can rig after this is possibly the arms and the legs. The arms and legs require just some uh, rotating deformers and usually what I do is that I would select the for instance the left arm I would select the le left arm and the other part of the left arm and just select that whole bit and create a rotation deformer for that and then I would go and add that to a perimeter so that I can move it in the animation mode when and then I would go and take the other hand and I would give that its own rotation deformer and um, give that a part on the deformer as well so that the ha arm and move can move by themselves but then the, it still looks kind of human and realistic. You do the same for the legs. For the hair when making a model, you, you usually what I would do, I would create a deformer for each hair if it is separated, but if it's just one, I just create one big deformer. At the bottom of the parameters, there are three um, the parameters, one for the front hair to move, the, and then the side hair to move, and then the back hair to move. The re you put deformers on the hairs, and then the you can move the hairs with the deformers to make it look like it's swaying in the wind almost. Um, I would usually do that for all my bits to make it look like in the wind. Here are some just examples of me doing the hair. Mm. 
When making the mouths, I usually have either one or three different mouths. So you usually have your closed mouth and your open mouth. So for the so what you would want to do first is create a parameter for the closed mouth on the mouth open parameter. And then you would do the same for the open mouth. What I would usually do with the open mouth is kind of stick it all in into the closed mouth and then when the mouth opens it actually looks like it's an opening mouth. Another thing that I do with the parameters is that I click a little button and that's here um, which would I can add another little parameter on so that it can so I can make the opacity so I can make it not seen at one stage but then it can be seen opening at another. You would usually have to apply this for all the mouths that you do. For example, on the beautiful lie meme, I did apply an awful... Um, I did make the mouths move one into another to make it look like the character was talking. For lip sync, what you want to do is first of all, before you actually edit your model, you want to go into modeling, parameters, and go down to setting for eye blink and lip sync. Once you click on this, you will come up with all of the little parameters that you will use. For lip sync, you can see here it says lip sync uh, here, and you want to select the parameter either mouth open or mouth form, depending on where you're going to make your mouths move. You will click OK. When you go into the animation mode, you will put in your audio that has to be a WAV file. If it's not a WAV file, it will not be able to be put into the program as Live to the Cubism only takes waves. There are many free websites online which can help you uh, convert your files. After that, you want to make your uh, thing as long as you can. To like the where the recording ends and extend your character as well Af after you've done that you can go up to animation track and apply lip sync you will come up with a little box here you want to put the model with the recording or the audio that you've set and click ok and it will automatically create a lip sync so example and that is how I do my lip sync. For the animator mode, I would usually create the character and add effects in the different software. But you have your character up here, you need to drag your character down here and you will get your character. You can move your character around in this red box and uh, you can change the size as well. If you click on scene one, which is what the name of a new project is always called. You can change the scene, you can ch change the farming, you can change the frame rate. If you want it to run really smooth, you should use 60 frames per second. The only thing with using 60 frames per second is that it means you have to animate more than you usually would and your time would possibly go down. You can also change like things down here and stuff. Another important thing when you're making your character, it's good to think put on perimeters because you will not be able to just grab the thing and move. And because it doesn't it doesn't like that and you have to put it all on parameters. You can every time you move a thing, it will record a little thing on here, which would kind of recognise the motion that you're doing. For example, here I have just animated the character moving. You can simply do this, you can do this with all of the parts, just make them move however you want so that you know the character looks like.
to export a file, you need to go to export image movie, click on movie. You can, if you want, export it as a gift and make it a gift, but I usually click movie and I and here you have to change it to mp3 so it would, you, would, you, you would click ok when saving it you can save it whenever sometimes I save it in my documents and other times I don't you can name it whatever you want you can name it whatever you want you click save and then it will begin to output the progress it sometimes depending on how long your piece is and um, it takes a bit of a while to output but usually if it's short like this it doesn't take that long another thing if you want to add a black a background or a green screen so that um, in an editing software you can add your own background as you see here I have got green screen what you need to do is you need to find a, your picture usually this works with most of the pictures but sometimes it doesn't what you have to do is you have to drag it into the the animator move it down and extend it to the period you want and make it bigger if it's a bit small and then you will have your green screen to put audio in you also have to do the same thing with the lip sync and make it into a wave file because again live to the cubison does not take mp3s or any others so you have to put it in as a wave file so that it can be put in and then you can animate and such what to it but one thing that is the annoying thing for me is that the music just sounds really awful whenever you move the slider for making the character move free dearly around your screen it includes an awful lot of deformers as i am using the free gel version i am only limited to 50 deformers and 50 rotation deformers but usually i don't have a lot of parts and i can do it one thing that i would consider when you're doing this is think what does your head do when you move it to the side a little bit for example you see less of one eye and a bit more of the other and the hair moves and everything like that the deformers help you move the head and so on. So first of all, you would like to start off with Andal X, which is just moving it left and right. And, th and then after that, you would like to go to Angle X and move it, move it up and down. After that, you have to click, um, go to Angle X and click the end part with all the numbers. You want to then go click select all, or just select. And then you go to the little, the little, three lines near the top of the parameters and click that after you've clicked that there will be a little uh, setting that will say synthesize corners you will then click synthesize corners and it will come up with your angle X and angle Y you want to click OK after you've done that you need to click the little there's a little thing on the side of angle X which will help you which will bring down the synthesized corners if you have the problem where you, when you move the thing down the character's head goes up it means on the angle x parameter you've, you've done it the wrong way around and that you need to redo that but that is a very simple way of doing it here's a few examples or little speed runs of me doing it
thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope you have found it helpful in some way. If there are any possibly things that you've been a bit confused on from this tutorial or you just I didn't mention in this video, feel free to ask in the comments because I most likely will respond because I don't really do much with my day so. But thank you for watching this tutorial and if it was helpful 